Welcome to the second episode of the Money Smarts for Kids podcast, where you can learn money skills for life. I'm your co-host, Hannah Reyes, with the 2022 Youth Advisory Board. I'm your other co-host, Gabriel Nagel. Throughout this podcast series, you'll get to learn about exciting topics from how to start your own small business to investing. This podcast is made by kids for kids. Last episode, we talked about the differences between credit and debit and why they're important. Today, we'll talk to some guests, including Anna Lear, the vice president of Youth Biz, Garrett Eisenman, a high school junior and owner of Denver Sneakers, and Spencer Hicks, a sixth grade owner of The Real Chocolate. And you'll get to learn how to start your own business. Before we get to those guests and ask them some questions, here's an overview on Youth Biz and how to start your own business. So Youth Biz is a part of Young American Center for Financial Education. It provides real life experiences and entrepreneurship from the very basic levels of just understanding budgeting to actually creating your own business, starting a website and creating actual products. Youth Biz also encompasses different things like marketplaces, summer camps, and one of our guests coming up was actually one of the most recent winners of the Youth Biz Stars Business Competition, which is held by Youth Biz and Young American Center. Before we get started, can you each tell us a little bit about yourselves and your journeys in entrepreneurship? Sure. My name is Anna Lear, and I'm the vice president of Youth Biz here at Young American Center, which is our division of entrepreneurship programming for young people ages 6 to 21. And uh, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. I've got a background in both business and education. I taught for a little while. I have my master's in education, but my undergrad is in business. So these two really meld quite well for my background and uh, what I'm truly, truly passionate about, which is essentially closing the achievement gap in education. And I think a lot of that goes back to business and real life skills, because a lot of young people can be successful in life when they have something that they're passionate about and they know what they want to do and they have the skills to do it. So that's a little bit of my background. My name is Garrett. Uh, I've always been interested in business and I started my first business when I was about 10. I started mowing lawns for my neighbors and then I started my main business currently, Denver Sneakers, when I was 14 and a freshman in high school in 2020. And I just recently started my second business about six months ago. My name is Spencer Hicks. I'm 11 and I started a business pretty much selling chocolates to the kids in my school. And I started that around six months ago. My goal is pretty much just to make everyone happy. For our first question, this is to Anna. How did you get involved with youth entrepreneurship? That is a great question as life tends to direct you in various ways that you haven't planned. So out of college, I did my undergrad in business and out of college, I participated in a program called Teach for America, which goes into low income communities and provides teachers with really high expectations to heighten the achievement of students in those communities. And so I did that in Miami-Dade public school system in Miami, Florida for two years, teaching third grade. And then after that, I was kind of done in the classroom. And upon moving to Denver with my employer at the time, I started doing some volunteer work with a nonprofit that was working on literacy programming for K through 12 education students. And through them, I was connected to the executive director at Youth Biz. And so that was sort of a, a revelation to me because she was looking for a director of programs. And it was a great combination of business and education, which I hadn't seen before. But this came along and it really married the two things that I'm really, really passionate and interested in. And the rest is, is kind of history. So I've been doing this, yeah, for about 10 years. I've been, I've worked with I don't know, thousands of students and developed lots of different curriculum and helped kids on a one-on-one -on -one basis, turn their businesses from idea through launch and beyond. So now it's something that I just really love to do. And I love watching kids go through the process. Wow. So what pieces of advice would you give to young people looking to start entrepreneurship themselves? My constant piece of advice is to just do it because if you think about it too long or you think you have to have a perfect plan or you have to get all your funding up front, it's just not going to happen. A lot of times it's, it's kind of like diets, right? If you say <laughs> like, uh, it, it, it's not the right time. Next year will be the right time or in a couple months will be the right time, but there's never really a right time. Now is the right time. And so especially for young people, there's so few risks involved with starting a business because 
probably you don't have a mortgage or bills to pay. And so it's a great opportunity to just expand your skills and become a little bit more well-rounded in what you know and who you know. And if you fail, you fail. It's not a huge loss, but you've learned a lot along the way. So my number one piece of advice is to just give it a go. Yeah. So as you've seen kids go through this journey in youth biz or just in general, um, their journey of entrepreneurship, what have you learned from kids? A lot. Um, I am constantly astounded by just like the lack of social pressure and nerves that a lot of kids have. They're just totally open to going up to a stranger and starting up a conversation. And if somebody says no, they're just like, okay, whatever. And then they go off to somebody else. They don't have that fear of rejection, I think, that a lot of adults have developed in their lifetime. So I'm constantly astounded by that. Similarly, I think I really enjoy watching kids who are very, very nervous in some of our school-based programs when they have to go up and present their business in front of a panel of judges who are professionals in the community, who seem very intimidating, who are not part of their school, who they don't know, who are dressed professionally. It's a very intimidating experience and they are absolutely terrified to share their business idea and their business plan with these people. And they get up there and do it. Afterwards, they're so proud of themselves and they can't believe that they did it. And so I'm constantly astounded and I learn a lot about just facing fears giving it a shot, even if you don't want to. As adults, we're not really forced to do that quite as much as we are when we're students. And so it's a good reminder for me to always push the boundaries and get outside my comfort zone. That's some great advice. And I think some adults could use that as well. So last question, how can people get more involved in youth biz? And if they want to start their own business today, what steps can a young person take? That's a really great question. Youth Biz has programming on almost all levels for young people age 6 to 21. So you're going to hear from some amazing entrepreneurs that are young people here momentarily. And similar young people who are just interested in starting business can come and take a workshop with us. We host marketplaces. We have a business competition. We also have loans that the bank provides. And Youth Biz is available to help with that application process and making sure that your business business plan is really squeaky clean. So there are a lot of ways that young people who are looking to start a business or who have a business and want it to grow can get involved. And then also we're in a lot of different schools. And so young people who maybe don't even know about entrepreneurship or have never thought about starting their own business can take the class in school and have a great opportunity to be exposed to things that they never previously would have thought of or even considered as a career option. So I think that's a perfect segue to meeting our two young entrepreneurs here, Garrett and Spencer. We'll start off with Garrett. Do you want to describe first what your business is and what you sell? Oh, my business is Denver Sneakers LLC. I pretty much, I just sell limited edition sneakers. These are really hard to get. They all come out from big brands like Nike or Adidas, but they were released in such limited quantities. You can't really just go to the store and buy them. So I kind of found a way to be able to get those sneakers and supply them to customers. Why did you choose to start a business, either your first one or the one you currently have? So I I really began getting interested in shoes when I was like 10 or 11. Me and my dad, we went to the Nike store and he bought me some shoes and they were $95. And I just thought that was crazy. So I kind of started learning about how much they went for. And I started becoming interested in them and wanting to buy them for myself. So I didn't really have the money to buy myself sneakers. So I kind of bought sizes that weren't my size and resold them. So I would have money to buy sneakers that were my size. What about you, Spencer? How'd you get the idea to start satisfying the sweet tooths that all these kids have? Well, pretty much I got the idea when some of my friends were wanting to get some chocolate after my school's candy sale ended. And I was well known for having chocolate from all around the world as I have a real sweet tooth. So I thought, why not sell some of the extra candy I had from a gingerbread decorating party a few weeks earlier? And it really kicked it off. Okay, so back to you, Garrett. First off, what was your mission when you started your business and how has it changed? 
So my mission originally, when I really started learning that sneakers could become a business and not just to make me some extra money to buy my own sneakers was to really help other sneaker collectors and enthusiasts be able to get the pairs that they were looking for. Because with sneakers going for high amounts of money, there's a lot of replicas and it's really hard to differentiate a real pair and a fake pair. So I really wanted to educate myself just to become a reliable source to help other people get what they want. So building off of that, what are your typical responsibilities as a business owner? For instance, what are your day-to-day business operations look like? So it really depends on the day. There's a lot of different services that my business offers. One of the main ones is sneaker sourcing. So I really work just to build connections in the Denver sneaker community. So it has changed over the course of my business, but I started off originally just trying to meet and sell to as many different people as I could just to build connections that I would be able to have access from items from them. So day to day, when I was first starting, it just started off by messaging as many people as I could find that were in the space. And then now it more comes to responding to messages, purchasing sneakers from them and authenticating them and listing them and shipping. And it's it's a long process, but it's... Um, more turned to purchasing instead of seeking out. Now back to Spencer, what about you? What are your favorite parts about owning a business in your day-to-day life or even just in general? Probably my favorite part is just satisfying my customers and helping them get what they wanted even though they can't really get it very easily for themselves. Now let's move on to what the biggest challenge that you've overcome through your business was or the hardest part. We'll start back with you, Garrett. The biggest challenge for me was mainly just losing money in the beginning. It really like hurt to have worked so hard to be able to get money and then end up losing it either by getting it stolen or a fake pair of sneakers. So that was really like hurtful at the beginning. If I bought a pair of sneakers thinking it was authentic and ended up wasting thousands of dollars realizing it was a replica, I talked to my business mentor about it and everything. And he's like, you're going to have to, you have to pay for college. Like you have to pay to get an education and you losing this money now and you're lo- learning valuable lessons from it and it ends up being a cheap education overall. So it kind of gave me a different outlook on it, which made it not as bad. Did you just say thousands of dollars? Can you explain a little bit more how people spend thousands on a pair of shoes? Um, so my main target market um, really doesn't look at sneakers just as something you wear on your feet in a pair of shoes. They really all look at it as a collector's item or a piece of artwork and uh, really the story that goes behind each pair. So yeah, people are really willing to pay really high markups depending on the supply that was produced and really what went into making it and why it was made the way it is. So people are willing to pay markups of thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. That's really crazy. Thank you. Um, Back to Spencer. What are some challenges that you faced within your business? Mine was kind of the same as Garrett. I didn't have quite enough money. Pretty much I started going into debt to my mom so she would pay for some of the candy. And now I'm paying her back. So I was in debt a few hundred dollars and then now I've paid her back and making quite a lot of profit. Yeah, that does seem like it's a challenge amongst all of these small businesses, especially as a young person. So what resources would you suggest young people can take advantage of to make sure that even if they don't have the money, they could still start a business? That's a really great question. I'm going to pipe up here because I have a lot of resources on this. There are typically about four ways that young people can go about getting initial funding for their business. Um, you can bootstrap your way. So you can just slowly get money from other tasks like babysitting or lawn mowing until you have enough to start your new venture. You can get a business loan, an informal loan from a family member like Spencer did and figure out a repayment plan informally. You can um, participate in a crowdsourcing platform like Kickstarter. And then the fourth way is the one that I most recommend to young entrepreneurs, at least in the Denver metro area. And that's Young Americans Bank because we offer business loans for young people at a very affordable interest rate and with low minimums. So that means 
means that if you go to a traditional bank, usually you're not going to be able to take out a business loan for, let's say, $50. But at Young Americans Bank, you can apply for a loan for something small, like $50, $100, something to just get your small business started. And so the bank is all about educating young people around financial literacy and debt is a really big part of that. And so it's a great opportunity to, one, not be like laughed out at in front of your face. Um, if you ask for a smaller amount of money to get your business started the way you may in a bigger bank and also have a lower threshold to accessibility, meaning that the opportunity for you to actually receive a business loan if you complete the process is not nearly as challenging or as steep as it is in a traditional adult bank. So those are the four most common ways that young people can get initial funding to start their business. But I strongly recommend anyone in the Denver area to really look into Young Americans Bank because the opportunity for a business loan is really exceptional. That's some great advice to other aspiring young entrepreneurs. So kind of to build on this, Garrett and Spencer, do you have any other advice that you would like to share? Um, like Anna said earlier, just get started. And what I really found helpful is it can really be a lot of work sometimes. So to really just focus on something that you're passionate about first, then rather than just trying to make money and then figure out the money part after you figure out something you're passionate about, because if you don't like what you're doing, it's really not going to make you happy. Um, I agree with both of them. Just go for it. If it doesn't work out, it's okay. You learned a lesson and it worked well. Now, one last question for Anna. What's the most memorable experience you've had with a young entrepreneur? Oh, man, that's a really good question. And it makes me think back on a lot of years and a lot of young people. The one that comes to mind initially is a young person who participated in our programming back before we were even acquired by Young American Center. So this was maybe 2014, I want to say. And um, he came to our site-based program in the Five Points community and participated in our summer program. He started a little business there. He really loved it and went to the second level and started a different business. And then, you know, that's been eight years now. Um, and, and this person has grown his business. He's continued with the same business for all of those years. He graduated high school and now he is in college and still running this business. And so getting to know this particular young man for so much time in his life and being a part of his his business and having him come and guest speak and having the tables turn. So really at the beginning, you know, I was the one providing instruction and now the tables have sort of turned where he's the one coming and he's providing help and instruction to younger entrepreneurs. And so seeing that is really, really cool. And I love having that long-term relationship with young people who build something from nothing and uh, they kind of create a little empire. So that's probably one of my most memorable. And before I finish, fun fact, I do want to bring to light for our listeners that both of our co-hosts here are pretty accomplished young entrepreneurs onto themselves. So Hannah used to run a business where she sold rosette clips and a variety of other products using a specific pattern of rosettes that she would sew. And she actually won our business competition in the 12 to 15 age category when she was, I think, 12. So uh, she's pretty much an all-star. And then Gabe is also an entrepreneur and he's a multiple time, many times over entrepreneur. I think he's on his fourth business now, but currently working to make the world a better place by reducing the effects of climate change. And so both of these co-hosts know a lot about business ownership, starting a business, entrepreneurship, and growing a business. And so this is a really fun episode to talk about entrepreneurship with so many entrepreneurs. Thank you so much, Anna. That's a great fun fact. And now you know a little bit about Hannah and myself. Thank you so much to our special guests, Anna, Garrett, and Spencer. Oh my gosh. And it looks like Spencer just dropped us off some chocolates. Hey, give me some of that. Join us next time to learn about different types of investments. Tune, Tune in next, next time to the Money, Money Smarts, Smarts for Kids, Kids podcast. podcast. Okay.